Okay, today we're going to talk about Chapter 2, Section 3, uh, continuing on with limits and continuity. We're looking at a piecewise function here, and when we look at this piecewise function and its graph, you can see it is a series of lines, but at x equals 4, the function is not defined. You can see, um, looking at the domain restrictions here, we come up to 4 and then start again after 4, but there is no definition for what happens at 4. And this sometimes happens um, in computer programming and some other areas where we have holes in a function and we want to take care of that. And that's called extending the function. Extending the function is add something to it so that it will then become continuous. So when you look at this, to add something to this piecewise function so that we would indeed fill in the hole right here, um, we would have to add some language. So what we need to do is define what happens at x equals 4. So when x equals 4, we want to know um, what y should equal. Because again, this is y. y should equal negative 5 when x equals 4. That would be this point right here. And if, by putting that in there and filling in that hole, we have now created a continuous function throughout the entire domain. And that's called extending the function or filling in the holes so it is now continuous. So we have made a continuous extension to this function at x equals 4. So we have, a, again, a start of a, a function here. It's, it looks like it's going to be a parabola, um, y equals 1 ninth x squared, except when x equals 4. So 0, 0 would be part of that. Um, if you plug in a 1, you would get 1 ninth, which would be very close to the x-axis. Um, we plug in 2, it would be 4 ninths. Plug in 3, it would be 1. Plug in 5, it would be 25 ninths, which would be something like up here. So you can see this function looks like this. You can see that hole would be um, right where that parabola would be. So to give a formula for what that would be, what we need to do is find the intended height at x equals 4. So really what we're doing is finding the intended height, which is the limit, as x approaches 4, of 1 ninth x squared. And we can use substitution to solve that. So we plug in 4, we 16 over 9. So the limit as x approaches 4, coming from the left and from the right, is 16 ninths. And so to give a formula, we basically extend the function. So we want y to equal 16 ninths when x equals 4. So to make a con continuous function or to extend the formula or the function to make it continuous, you find the limit for that missing um, part of the domain. Here we have x squared minus 16 over x plus 4. Uh, I can tell that at x equals negative 4, we'll be dividing by 0. So there's definitely a problem at negative 4. But we're hoping that we can extend the function and make it continuous at negative 4. 
All we need to do is find that intended height at x equals negative 4, or find the limit. Find the limit as x approaches negative 4 of the x squared minus 16 over x plus 4. And again, we try substitution, it doesn't work. So then we try factoring. And in factoring, we get some cancellations. And then we can try our substitution. We get negative 4 minus negative 4, which equals negative 8. So we can extend this function. We know at negative 4, the y value should be negative 8. So if we had this type of formula, like in a computer program, and the user plugged in negative 4 for some reason, they would get an error message. But if they would put this in the computer language also, that just give it negative 8 when you plug in negative 4, that would make the, f the program run efficiently without any errors. Piecewise function, again, is this function continuous at all points? Well, what you want to do is look at each level. On this first level, we have y equals 2x minus 1. We should know that that is a line with the slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 1. We know lines are always continuous. And then we look at the second level, and that's also a line, so we know that's continuous also. The only chance of discontinuity, then, would be when we switch from one line to the other. If the lines, for example, do something like this, then it wouldn't be continuous. But if the lines do something like this, then it would be continuous. So we have to check at x equals 0 to see if each one of these is the same height when we switch from one line to the other one. So all we do is find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right and from the left. Well, from the right would be when x is greater than 0, so that would be using this one. And we can use substitution. And if we approach it from the right, we would get 3, plugging in 0 for x. If we approach it from the left, that would be when x is less than 0. You plug that in, and you get 2 times 0, which is 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So those limits are not the same. So we have more of a situation like this. The function is not continuous at 0. Not continuous because left hand limit equals negative 1 right hand limit equals 3 at x equals 0 okay look at another one of those again we have a line and a line, so we have to worry about those functions being discontinuous. So again, we're concerned with two. So if we look at the top one, that would be the left-hand limit. If we plug in two, we get six minus two, which is four. The right hand limit at x equals 2. Of 1 half x. Plug in 2 there, you get 2 times a half, which is 1, plus 3, which is 4. Since they are the same from the left and the right, it will be continuous because it's a filled in circle. So if I graph that one, it'll uh, be something like this.
That's the 3x minus 2, stopping at 2. And then 1 half x plus 3 would look something like that. And then that would fill in circle because of this. Can you factor x squared minus 16? That is the difference of squares. And we know we just take the square root of x and the square root of 16, and those are our factors. Now, x minus 16, can you factor this? Is that a perfect square, x a perfect square? Well, it could be. Um, and we could factor this into square root of x and square root of x, and then plus 4 and minus 4, just like above. And if you multiply that out, you would indeed get x minus 16. Now, why would we ever want to factor x minus 16? The reason is, is because sometimes you might have a fraction where you have square root of x minus 4 on the bottom, and that allows us to do this. So, Sometimes you can be creative in your factoring to get things to simplify. There's your assignment, and good luck, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.